you can do something about this pandemic. And I don't just mean wear a mask or wash your hands. What if I told you that we need your help right now, where you're sitting to reach people who are in crisis? You can learn how to contribute to this humanitarian effort right here. From the safety of your home, you can use powerful mapping technology to help the helpers out there find people in need and deliver life-saving aid. Your participation won't cost you anything but your time. And if your teacher assigned you this uh, video, then you'll get school credit for it. It's true, if you want to help, keep watching. I'll show you everything you need to know. My name is Lauren Sinclair, but my students have always called me Sinclair, or Mrs. Sinclair if you want to be fancy. I live in Portland, Oregon, and I teach GIS, which is Digital Mapping Technology. I also teach Math and Science, which is uh, where you get your money. In fact, if you want to make money, you should really study your math, because math tutoring, it pays pretty good. Actually, never take financial advice from a teacher. That's a better way to go. You've probably seen a map like this one by now. I've been collecting maps like these because this is what I teach, how to design interactive digital maps that help us understand and make sense of what's going on in the world. There are hundreds of these in every language because everyone's trying to make sense of coronavirus and what to do about it. Okay, so you wanna help. You want to engage with COVID instead of sitting there helpless. I feel that. GIS is the way to do that right now, even if you're still stuck in quarantine. Hey, Grandma, what's quarantine? Sinclair, this is Sinclair from the future. Your meme is dead. If you want to get straight to helping right now, skip to episode four. You'll learn the basic mapping skills you need to put people in need on the map and thank you. If I'm honest though, I think it's better if we learn a little bit about how we map disease before jumping into making your own map. A little context is always a good idea. And this is the way I taught my own students. We've done everything I put here in this video series together. So I think they would support the progression of this learning path. It's the same way they experienced it. So today's lesson, children, what is GIS? And why do I think it's the best possible tool to help the human race figure out how pandemics start, how they spread, and how we can stop them? The basic answer, digital interactive maps, GIS, help us visualize patterns. And humans are really good at looking at patterns and making sense of them. One of the patterns we can understand when it's spread out over space is phenomena like diseases. Is it something in the air? Is it spread from person to person? Or is it something that comes from animals? <laughs> Pandemics have always been part of human history, and they will be again. But humans took a major step forward when we started mapping disease and layering on top of that information about other related factors. Were all of those people who got sick drinking from the same water supply? Did the disease follow these major trade routes? The great thing is that as viruses and bacteria continue to evolve, so do we. And our technological evolution is strong enough to predict when and where the next big outbreak will occur. If you understand how to use technology like GIS, you're giving all of us a better fighting chance at survival. This winter, next season, and in future epidemics and outbreaks. You can be part of the solution now and for the future. So let's get started by looking at some of the GIS maps that are already out there. Here's one that's really popular. So we've got different shades of red, right, to indicate the severity of coronavirus in each country. The entire country or state is shaded in so that you get a sense of what's going on in that entire area. But then if you click on it, you can zoom in and see what's going on by county. This is one mapping style where you try to use colors in a method called a choropleth to show um, what's happening in a given boundary. But there are other ways of doing it too. Okay, so this map is showing graduated symbols and graduated symbols can be really helpful when you're zooming out and you can really see areas of concentration. 
but when you're zooming in, they can be a little bit confusing. For example, some people might think, hey, this little dot is where there's a city in Oklahoma, but it isn't. If I click on it, it just shows that there's only 4,377 active cases, which is what I'm showing in the GIS right now, in the entire state of Oklahoma. So that's just one example of what I see when I look at a map like this. But what are you going to do? Here's how this is going to work. Click the links here and complete the activities. They'll guide you through interacting with a GIS like the one I just showed you, and you'll use your own observations to notice what you notice and analyze what's going on. Then meet me back here for the next episode.